The 58th Ash Annual Meeting and Exposition is underway here in San Diego, California. I'm Ed Highland. And I'm Rachel Kopchak. From the clinical and scientific education sessions to the named lectures, it's all happening here at Ash 2016. this year, in order to cover the breadth of two hot topics, ASH is holding joint scientific committee sessions, the first on the understanding and repair of red blood cells. This special session combines presentations of newly elucidated fundamental mechanisms of cell signaling and gene expression control. Presenters share their demonstrations of ongoing state-of-the-art studies of gene therapy strategies using cellular and animal model studies theoretically and also practically manipulable for some therapeutic purposes. Some ideas uh, occur in terms of sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia by activating a gene which is not being expressed, by manipulating the loop, but uh, it also can be thought of as a potential uh, in the opposite direction. For example, in certain cancers that are due to translocations, an enhancer activates an inappropriate gene and a loop is formed, and that kind of loop could also be manipulated to be decoyed, for example, away from the gene. The second Hot Topic session focused on clonal development of hematopoietic stem cell specification and differentiation at single cell resolution. Among the presentations was utilizing transcription factor reporters to track myeloid lineage fate determination and the instructive role of niche and environmental factors. We could show that hemogenic endothelium exists, that was a, a matter of contention for quite a while. We could show that the instructive action of cytokines on lineage choice actually exists. All that was um, crucially dependent on the continuous single cell analysis. And more recently, now we've looked at the importance of, of specific transcription factors, of switches in transcription factor networks, and, and if their role is indeed as the textbooks tell us, and it actually is not if you look uh, continuously at the single cell level. Many attendees came to hear oral and poster presentations on aggressive lymphoma, diffuse large B-cell and other aggressive B-cell non-Hodgkin lymphoma. The results from retrospective observational studies are providing new insights. As we treat uh, lymphomas not as a one-size-fits-all disease, so Kami Maddox presented on the ultra-high-risk diffuse large B-cell lymphoma patients and trying to tease out what are the characteristics in that group that contribute to um, poor outcome. And the other thing that was kind of surprising was the fact that patients that have Epstein-Barr virus positivity, which historically has been not a good uh, predictor of outcome, patients that didn't have it versus patients that did, they actually did the same. Another way ASH is spreading the latest breakthroughs in hematology is through its scientific workshops. In this session on hematology and aging, speakers presented research on stem cells and aging, implications on aging on immune function, interactions between aging and cancer treatments, and more. One expert in the field of aging hematopoietic stem cells says the findings are surprising. There is not a single driver of aging which like lead to stem cell dysfunction. There is a, a collection of various features which are both cell intrinsic and driven by the environment and we are just teasing that apart one, one by one. So looking at like DNA repair mechanism, uh, uh, proteostasis mechanism and so forth. When treating patients, quality of care has and will always be a point of focus for hematologists. Here are some ways to best utilize health information technology to improve the healthcare quality of patients. The two big challenges facing hematologists today include clinical interoperability, having all the key data relating to the patient at time of care, and the amount of time it takes to move away from paper to technology. The fact that the systems may not be as usable for us to easily collect that data. And I think to advocate for that, some advocacy uh, from a policy perspective around what are appropriate data sets to collect versus what's too much collection at point of care and what moves more towards a realm of uh, research and innovation versus practical clinical collection of data. A discussion on the political landscape in relation to the field of hematology took place here at the Grassroots Luncheon. The featured speaker, Greg Simon, the executive director of the White House Cancer Task Force and the Obama administration's Cancer Moonshot. The effort hopes to achieve 10 years of progress in the prevention, treatment and care of cancer patients in five years. 
years. Simon put together a task force of over 20 agencies, from the likes of NASA working with the National Cancer Institute, many new collaborations have been formed to help reach the cancer moonshot goal. One collaboration is the military has offered up service members' blood samples for doctors to research for precursors to cancer. Simon offered extra insight because he was diagnosed with CLL at the time he took this role. I've always been in great hands. Uh, and my leukemia treatment went fabulously well and everything's fine. It's been almost a year since my last chemo treatment. Um, and I found it through a physical. Uh, so it's just one, I'm a, I'm a poster child that early detection and proper treatment uh, in CLL can have a great result. I would like that result to be for people with ALL and AML, uh, and that's the kinds of things that really inspire me to do what I'm doing.